A 96-year-old woman cheated out of thousands of dollars in News 6's uncovered investigators believe Orlando City Commissioner Regina Hill may be involved in this. Investigators believe Regina Hill used that money to treat herself to a facelift, a trip to Miami, and more. Now, that woman's attorneys are fighting to keep Hill away from her and her money. When someone shows you their true colors, believe them the first time. Regina Hill's rise to power as Orlando City Commissioner for District 5 is a tale filled with second chances and repeated betrayals. Despite over 20 arrests, Hill convinced voters of her redemption and her dedication to public service. But how many second chances does one person deserve? Hill's story, riddled with exploitation, fraud, and scandal, forces us to question the wisdom of giving someone with such a troubled past the reins of power. Recently, she took advantage of a 96-year-old woman, exploiting her financially for personal gain and shattering any trust the community had left in her. Let's get into it. A fresh face and name is elected to the Orlando City Commission. Regina Hill captured a little more than 54% against Juan Lynham. Hill's been arrested at least 21 times, but she's turned her life around and vows to do the same for District 5. You know, it's been some valleys high, some valleys low, but God, that I stand in front of these steps to represent the people. Before stepping into the political arena, Regina Hill had a history that would make most voters not even bother to even think about her. With over 20 arrests, ranging from theft to drug possession, Hill's criminal background is extensive. One would think with such a past would stop someone from even holding public office, but Hill managed to overcome these obstacles, at least temporarily, portraying herself as a reformed individual dedicated to serving her community. So somehow, Hill managed to become the Orlando City Commissioner despite her extensive criminal history by framing her as a narrative of personal redemption and community involvement. Her campaign emphasizes her experiences of overcoming addiction and homelessness, which resonated with many voters who saw her as a symbol for resilience and hope. This narrative helped her gain the necessary support to win her seat in 2014, despite her controversial past. Hill's ability to maintain her position was also aided by the lack of stringent vetting processes for public office candidates, allowing her to sidestep scrutiny that might have otherwise disqualified her based on her criminal record. As she became commissioner, here comes the problems. We are also on top of breaking news in the Pine Hills area tonight. Deputies say they found guns and drugs when they raided a home owned by Orlando City Commissioner Regina Hill. Now inside the home of Orlando City Commissioner Regina Hill, they found drugs and weapons stashed. So right now they have detained about six to eight people. Again, this raid happened about 3.45 this afternoon. SWAT teams and deputies served this search warrant. Several people tried to run apparently, but they were caught. This house is owned by City Councilwoman Regina Hill, and apparently it's been under surveillance for the last two months after acting on a tip. Hill's tenure as a city commissioner was riddled with controversies. In 2015, her home was raided by law enforcement, leading to the discovery of drugs and guns. Her sons were arrested for trafficking methamphetamine in the possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. The son of Orlando City Commissioner Regina Hill is set to appear before a judge this morning. It's all after his arrest on a long list of drug and gun charges. 28-year-old Raheem Hill is accused of possession of cocaine and marijuana, along with having guns and ammunition, even though he's a convicted felon. The Sentinel reports Hill was wanted because troopers say he was a passenger in a car that took off from a traffic stop last month, then crashed into other cars. In 2017, Hill faced accusations of affordable housing fraud, accused of falsifying residency information to qualify for her position. Investigates a complaint leveled against Orlando City Commissioner Regina Hill. Now in the hands of the state attorney's office, the complaint claims Hill lives in a low-income apartment complex even though she makes more than $60,000 a year as a commissioner. Orlando residents are not only paying Hill's salary, they may also be helping her pay her rent. According to the complex's owner, the most a resident can make in order to qualify to live there is $39,000 a year, and that's for a four-bedroom apartment. A complaint filed with the state attorney's office this week asks how Hill is allowed to live there if she's making $60,000 a year as a city commissioner. It asks for an investigation into whether she's renting illegally. Around the same time, she was caught on social media appearing intoxicated further tarnishing her public image. I've been out here trying to talk to Commissioner Hill because since this video has surfaced, it's been seen thousands of times and it's brought up some serious allegations. Power to the people, uh, we're back. Orlando Commissioner Regina Hill says this isn't her under the influence of any drugs. I'm not, 
all that cohesive. Yeah, yeah. You wanna come in? We'll come in. We're not even listening. Who cares? This video, which we don't know when it was taken, has surfaced online and on Facebook and on YouTube. Hill was arrested for public intoxication while out of state. What made this incident particularly egregious was the revelation that she used city funds for this trip. These issues highlighted a pattern of deceit and irresponsibility that defined her time in office. The most damning chapter in Hill's saga began in March 2024 when she was arrested following an investigation by the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. She was charged for exploiting a 96-year-old woman. Just last week, New 6 investigators told you about a lawsuit that alleges Hill took more than $100,000 from a 96-year-old woman and used it on things for herself, including plastic surgery. And according to the jail, she was arrested on seven charges and is being held right now on a $40,000 bond. Now those charges include exploitation of the elderly disabled and scheme to defraud and mortgage fraud. All of this comes after all allegations surfaced last week. According to the investigation, Hill initially presented herself as a benefactor, coordinating the cleanup of a victim's home and connecting her with community resources. However, it soon became clear that her intentions were far from noble. Hill allegedly obtained power of attorney over this elderly victim and used this authority to exploit her financially over a three-year period. She's accused of using the victim's identity to purchase a home and make unauthorized renovations, amounting to over $400,000. Additionally, she allegedly accessed the victim's bank accounts, spending over $100,000 of her personal money. These actions are disgusting. They are criminally predatory. Governor Ron DeSantis, acting in accordance with the Florida Constitution, suspended Hill from her position. This suspension was a necessary move given the gravity of Hill's offenses and the betrayal of the public trust. Hill is now awaiting trial, which is set in September. She pleaded not guilty, but the evidence against her is substantial. If convicted, Hill faces a maximum of 180 years in prison. Many of her supporters, who once admired her for overcoming personal challenges, now feel deeply betrayed. Her actions have not only tarnished her legacy, but also shaken the public confidence in local government. This incident prompt calls for her removal from office. And many question why Mayor Dyer and other city officials seem to protect Hill despite her clear violations of public trust. Community activists highlighted the misuse of funds and Hill's intoxication as violations of the Florida Constitution which should have led to her immediate suspension. It's important to recognize the red flags before voting for a candidate. When we head to the polls, we're not just casting a vote, we're placing our trust in someone to make decisions that will impact our community. While second chances can be an important part of personal growth, it's important to differentiate between minor mistakes and a pattern of extensive criminal behavior. Candidates like Regina Hill, who had a history marked by several arrests and legal troubles, highlight the importance of recognizing these issues before casting your vote. Red flags in a candidate's history are warning signs that should not be ignored. These can include a pattern of criminal behavior, consistent unethical practices, or repeated exploitation of others. In Hill's case, her criminal record includes over 20 arrests for various offenses, such as theft and drug possession and fraud. This extensive history wasn't just a one-off mistake, but a pattern of behavior that continued even after she took office. We as voters need to perform due diligence when looking at these candidates. This means thoroughly researching a candidate's background, understanding their history, and looking for any patterns of misconduct. It's important to consider whether a candidate has shown genuine remorse and taken steps to rectify past wrongs, or if they continue to engage in unethical behavior. While everyone deserves a second chance, it must be a balance between forgiveness and accountability. A candidate with a single past mistake who has shown sincere efforts to improve may be worthy of consideration. However, someone with an extensive criminal history, like Hill, who has repeatedly showed a disregard for the law and ethical standards, raise serious concerns about their suitability for public office. Regina Hill should have never been in public office to begin with. There was too much of her criminality that she never reformed from, and she just used public office to exploit people. But what do you guys think about this story? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for taking time to watch this video, and i see you guys in the next video.